harmony within the way to transcendence an excerpt from flowering of consciousness harmony within is the way to transcendence beyond body mind and spirit this is the role that educationists journalists masters and all those who are in the authority have to fulfill i spoke on meditation the missing dimension in education at howard square cambridge massachusetts this is important for inner harmony and birth of new man i am reminded of an anecdote h g wells had completed his great work on the history of the world and he made tremendously important statement in his rare book for example he said about gautam buddha that he was the most godless yet the godliest man that has ever walked on the earth his book was the talk of all the intellectuals around the world and one intellectual journalist interviewed him about the book his first question was what do you think about civilization and the answer that h e wells gave is of such depth that it has not yet to be forgotten it is fresh and new he said the idea of civilization is good he said the idea of civilization is good somebody must do something about it because still it is an idea civilization has not happened researching for my book on world history i have come to know that man is, is still uncivilized this is what h g wells said about the civilization he said the idea of civilization is good but somebody must do something about it because it still it is an idea civilization has not yet happened researching for my book on world history i have come to know that man is, is still uncivilized it is indeed true the moment the day man will be civilized he will be beyond the body beyond the mind beyond the spirit he will attain to enlightenment and one of the reasons man is still uncivilized is the division between body mind and soul this division has been preached by all the religions of the world they have condemned the body a few of them have condemned the mind too and they have all praised the soul how can it be possible you discard the temple walls the temple structure the body is the outer dimension of the inner soul is the inner dimension of the outer and mind is that bridges the inner and the outer dimension this division has been preached by all the religions of the world they have condemned the body a few of them have condemned the mind too and they have all praised the soul the result has not been as they expected the result has been a very strange poisoning of humanity people have not dropped their bodies they have not dropped their minds and instead they have become guilty about them about the mind and the body they have lost self respect touch with the wisdom of their bodies and they have lost the mastery of their own minds 
and the reality is that unless the three function in total organic unity, a man is not whole. Unless these work in harmony with one another, man cannot attain to his totality, to his wholeness. One who is not whole is not holy either. My basic approach is not to be against the body or the mind. I am all for a unity, a symphony, a synchronicity among these three spheres. And a man will be fulfilled only when all three are functioning in harmony, total harmony, as oneness. In the East, the body has been so much condemned that the ultimate result is poverty. No science, no technology, only a poor and hungry body, starved, condemned and neglected exist. And in the West, the result has been a healthy body, a evolved technology, richer literature, art, all for the nourishment of the mind, but a poor soul remains almost non-existent. This is a strange tragedy. The West is suffering from a poor soul and the East is suffering from a poor body and a poor mind. For a new man is to drop the old conditionings of the East and of the West simultaneously. Drop all antagonism either of the spiritualist or of the materialist. Accept the realistic approach that existence is both matter on the outside and a spirit on the inside. And between these two extremes, the two ends, is the mind that works as bridge. In a miniature form, the same is true about every human being. New man will emerge out of this unity. If somebody says that Gautam Buddha is only half, it hurts. But truth is truth. Mahavir is half, just a soul. He was anti-life. So is Zorba against spirituality, the materialist. All the scientists, even the greatest like Albert Einstein, who cannot conceive the possibility that there is an inner existence of consciousness. Albert is half. That is the tragedy of the West. Buddha is half, that is the tragedy of the East. And the work for the future is to bring them together. <coughs> Osho has been using one expression and that is Zorba the Buddha. I agree with him totally. And that is my understanding of the new man. The body has to be enjoyed as much as your soul. Matter has its own beauty and power, just as consciousness has its own world, its silence, peace and ecstasy. And between the two is the area of the mind, something of the matter and something of the spirit. The poet is just in the middle between the materialist and the spiritualist. His poetry touches the two extremes. I would like all the three points, the two extremes in the middle to become one unity. A man who rejoices in his body and his wisdom, a man who uses his mind as a significant mechanism, that evolution has brought and a man who does not stop at mind instead goes on searching beyond, reaches to the dimension of no mind, into the realms of divineness, is indeed the work of Tao Shu Buddha, the work of the masters, the birth of new man. To produce this man, 
would be the effort of all those who are in some way concerned with educating the new generation, the educationists, the journalists, the spiritual masters, all people who are involved in some way in creating a better human being than has been possible in the past, have to accept the totality of man without rejecting anything. The body has to be respected, the soul has to be understood and mind has to be accepted as the bridge between the matter and the spirit. Educationists, journalists, religions and governments can do a tremendous service to humanity if their minds are clear. If they are not themselves prejudiced, either in favor of a particular religious belief, spiritualism, or in favor of materialism, a journalist and the educationist have to be of an open mind, receptive to all kinds of possibilities. He has to be a seeker and a researcher and an agnostic, not a believer. The moment you believe in something, you start enforcing your belief. Whether it is right or wrong, the journalists, educators and the people who are in authority have, have to be open to all dimensions, ready to accept anything that is going to beautify existence and make man more blissful, healthier, more intelligent and more aware of the tremendous mystery that surrounds us. Indeed, that is the only prayer to become aware of the miraculous, the mysterious that surrounds us. And only a man who has come to a unity and harmony within himself is capable of understanding the mysteries of the existence. Only such a man can be really called religious in the true sense, one who is harmonized within, one in whom the body mind and spirit work in harmony, in unison with one another. This can happen when you become a witness to your body, to your mind and in that witnessing you will be aware of the duality. In witnessing the duality is present. When you witness you find yourself separate from that which is your experience. It is like if a thorn pricks your foot. The witnessing implies that the thorn has not pricked you, instead it has pricked your body and you are only the knower of it. The piercing has occurred at one place while the awareness of it is present somewhere else. Mind becomes aware of it. The thorn pricks at the feet but the awareness happens somewhere else. This is naturally happening. Witnessing means that this too have to be brushed. So in the mind of a witness there exists a duality, a separation between the experiencing of an event and the actual occurrence of it. Therefore, with this you cannot rise to the state of non-duality and harmony. And that is why the seeker who stops at the level of being a witness, a watcher certainly remains confined to a kind of dualism. The watcher, the witness always divides the existence into conscious and unconscious. Conscious means one who knows and the unconscious means that which is known. So eventually you are bound to end up in dividing the two. 
the harmony means that the experience and the experience have to be one this is beyond witnessing and through this method when you go on witnessing everything at the level of the body where thorn has pricked at the level of the mind where it is being experienced and who is the one who is giving the awareness of this when these are harmonized you are indeed balanced and harmonized that is the beginning of a new journey a birth of a new man that is the ultimate in the process of transcendence the beginning once the beginning has taken place the ultimate is bound to happen only this much for this morning